Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Best of British Blackwell. I hope you're all doing all right. Um, this is, uh, I'm not sure about where you are, but this is week three now of our lockdown here in the UK. And uh, we were told yesterday that um, it's gonna go on for another three weeks at least. So, you know, we're gonna have six to seven weeks of lockdown and not sure how you guys are coping, but um, we're doing okay. Um, but, you know, things are getting a little bit boring now. So, um, in terms of food, I've been trying to develop some ideas to do things differently. And today's recipe is very different to the recipes that I, I normally make. And it's one that I've been putting off uh, for a little while because it's a bit of an experimental cook. Um, just before we do start the cook, what I will say is um, a big thank you to everyone that's been watching these videos and supporting the channel. I have noticed over the past uh, two or three weeks that uh, the number of subscribers that I'm seeing is going up. So welcome to all of the new subscribers and thank you for your support. Uh, there's been a huge amount of support for my leg of lamb recipe, uh, which no coincidence really with it being Easter. It was a lovely leg of lamb that we made and thank you for all the comments on that. Um, and thank you for your emails as well. I've been receiving some really nice emails. Um, I suppose with this lockdown thing, you know, it, it, it's terrible that this coronavirus is spreading through the country, but there is some good things coming out of it. I'm getting some really nice, encouraging emails from people, and I will try to respond to everybody. So, uh, in, in, I'll try to respond to everybody um, as quickly as possible. You will get a response from me. So, keep sending your emails and comments in, and thank you for those. What are we cooking today? Well, today, I don't know whether you can hear in the background, but it's absolutely hammering with rain. So that's kind of scuppered my plan for today, really. I was gonna cook a brisket on my, um, on my Weber barbecue. However, that's not gonna uh, deter me. What I'm gonna start by doing today is getting this piece of brisket, which I'll show you in a minute, all rubbed up, uh, marinating and ready to go onto the barbecue tomorrow when, fingers crossed, we have some better weather. So I'll edit this all together so it's a two day cook, but you could conceivably do this in a day if you wanted to. Come over and have a look at the ingredients and let's get started. So here it is. This is what we're cooking with today. This is a half salt brisket flat. So first thing to say is that it's not often you see cuts of meat like this in, well, you never see it really in British supermarkets and you very rarely see it um, in any shop really, but basically this is just a flat piece of beef brisket. You will see, the American viewers will see these all the times in their, in their supermarkets and their, uh, their butchers and so on, but it's not that often that we see them here. What is it? It's the, it's the top end of the cow basically, so this is a relatively tough piece of meat, so it really does need to be cooked very slowly, and the most popular way of cooking this is to smoke it, uh, get a nice uh, ring of, ring of uh, smoke, red uh, ring of smoke around the outside of it and smoke this down as a brisket. The other thing that you can do is you can brine it and you can turn it into pastrami or corned beef or salt beef and uh, the clue is in the title of this one a little bit. This is a half salt brisket. So this has been already been brined, ready for somebody to turn it into a pastrami or a salt beef. We're gonna go slightly different with it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out of the packaging, and by the way, this weighs about five pounds. It's about two and a half kilos, so it's about five pounds. Big old piece of meat. I'm gonna take it out of the packaging, I'm gonna dry it all up, and we're gonna put a marinade on it, and I'm gonna talk you through some of the marinades that we put on it ahead of getting it on our barbecue. Okay, so let's have a closer look at this piece of meat. Now, something that happened, which I wasn't expecting to happen was, piece of this brisket fell off when I took it out of the packet. So you can see that this was either never a part of this piece of meat or it's broken off uh, whilst being packaged. That doesn't really matter. It's not ideal, but what I would have liked to have done is kept that as one piece so I could kind of just whack it on the barbecue altogether. But that's not, not a worry at all. This is the back end of it. You can see it's been trimmed up. Uh, there's still a little bit of sinew on it, but we're not gonna worry about that too much. This piece here is, is nice and lean as well. Hopefully you can see the texture of the meat. You know, it's very sinewy. That means it's gonna to have to cook for quite a long time for it to be good for us. Let's give it a turn. And again, on the top, you can see that pretty much all of the fat has been trimmed away. Again, we've got a piece of sinew on there. I'm gonna leave that on there because I want this to remain a solid piece of meat. I don't want it falling apart. If you take the connective tissue out completely, it will start to break down and fall apart as it cooks. 
Um, the more I look at this, the more I don't think this was ever part of, of this same piece of meat. But like I said, not to worry. What we're going to do, we're going to get this uh, rubbed up in a, a beautiful marinating rub. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that next. Okay. So just before we start, what I like to do when I'm doing this part of the cook is get some gloves on because you're going to be handling a lot of meat, a lot of different ingredients, and it beats kind of washing your hands 10 or 15 times. So this is the setup that I use when I'm kind of marinating large chunks of meat and giving them a good rub. I bought this thing here from a local little office depot uh, um, shop that was closing down. Um, I find it really, really handy to contain all of the mess when you're doing a rub and to also uh, seal the meat in to let it refrigerate overnight. First things first, Worcester sauce. This isn't Lee and Perrin's Worcester sauce, this is the Worcester sauce substitute that I bought when I was doing my vegan experiment. I find it tastes exactly the same. It's probably not quite as strong as Lee and Perrin's though, so it's perfect for this type of thing, which is just adding it onto this meat, and it gives us a base structure to add our rub to. So a really nice amount of that, we might come back and put some more on. Now the rubs, um, anyone that does a bit of barbecue in these days or is serious about their cooking will know that if you rub meat with some uh, dry rub marinade before you cook, you get some superb results. It's just starting to kind of, I mean, it, it's been, been a thing in America for a very long time, but it's just starting to kind of kick off a little bit now of uh, pre-rubbing meats and to, to get flavor into them. I treated myself the other day and went on Amazon and bought myself quite a few of these. Some of these uh, varieties here not, not widely available in the UK. So I've got the Cosmos Dry Rub here, which is uh, called Cow Cover, and that is a specific beef dry rub. It's got salt, chili, um, spices like paprika, onion, garlic, all that kind of stuff. Smells superb. I got this stuff here, which is quite aptly named Bullshit, <laughs> um, which is from the Big Cock Ranch, so they come up with some fantastic names. And again, it, it's pretty much all of the kind of ingredients uh, that you would expect to see uh, in, a, in a beef rub there with chilies and black pepper and some salt and pepper. Uh, another one here is, this one is quite widely available in the UK, it's called Dirty Cow. This one's interesting, really. It's got mocha coffee, umami, and pepper and chili in it, so I thought I'd give that a go. And one I'm not going to be using today, it's more specifically for um, ribs, is this bone sucking sauce one, which I will use in a later video and I'll show you that. So we've got all of the different spice rubs here. I'm going to be using a little mixture of all three actually, just because this is a bit of, a, a bit of an experiment and that's, that's what I want to do. So let's continue, let's get this meat completely covered in this Worcester sauce, it's going to help us to uh, stick these rubs to it. Also, the fact that the Worcester sauce is very acidic means that it's gonna to help to marinate that meat as well. I will just get some kitchen roll. Just dry the gloves off a little bit. Let's go in with a rub. Don't forget, if you're doing this with gloves on, give your um, rub pots a good wipe down afterwards. Let's use the other section. Yeah, let's get this on here. Once we've done this, I'm going to be putting this back in the fridge because like I said, unfortunately today, some shocking weather out there. Not going to be able to, to cook this up today. Uh, wouldn't uh, be able to light a match out there, let alone a barbecue. And what I am going to be doing is cooking this on the, uh, the Weaver Master Touch. But yeah, get it all covered up. And then when we're ready to cook, come back and I'll show you how we're going to cook this bad boy. Okay, so we're on day two of the cook now. Weather's much, much better today. Much better for barbecue. Uh, just before we start cooking this meat, I'll talk you through the barbecue setup and what we've got going on and how we're gonna how we're gonna cook this. I'm using the uh, Weber Master Touch today. I'm only gonna be using one side of this uh, barbecue for, for heat. It's gonna be an offset cook. I'm not gonna be smoking it. Got my coals in here in the chimney, uh, getting nice and hot. I'm gonna pour them into this side here. I've got a water tray underneath, which I'm gonna fill with uh, some nice hot water, and then I'm gonna be putting the beef on here. I've got a temperature probe uh, on here, just keeping an eye on the accurate temperature of the uh, barbecue, which is gonna be feeding back to my phone and my little device here, which I'll show you a little bit later. 
and I've got a spare probe here which is going to be going into the meat to give us an accurate reading of that. So, okay so our coals are now in, our water is in the tray underneath and like I said you don't have to worry about the water becoming dirty or anything dripping into it. The whole idea of the water tray is that it provides as you can see here already some steam and some moisture to this cook. Now we're going to get our beef beautiful rub on it and get that on Let's put that piece that fell off just on there so as you can see the heat is here the moisture is underneath the beef is on one side and we're going to get this heat rolling over the top here let's get our temperature probe and make sure it goes into quite a thick part of this beef All we're going to do now is put the lid on, just making sure that the vent sits over the top of the meat. You don't want the vent on this side because then all that will happen is the coals will just draw their um, um, air from underneath, heat straight up and straight back out. It's not going to touch the meat, you want it coming up and around. So we let this get up to temperature and we'll pop back and see how this uh, cracks on. Okay so I've just turned the uh, camera away from the sun a little bit to talk to you about the uh, setup that I'm using here to monitor temperatures. So I've got a device called a Chew God, a um, bit of a strange name I know. It's a very simple setup really, you can see that the two probes that I've got in the barbecue and the meat at the moment are showing up on there. So we're showing that the inside of the brisket is 17 degrees and this is all in centigrade not in Fahrenheit. You can change it over if you want to. And that the actual barbecue itself is running at 147, you know, you know about 150 degrees. Because um, we're going to be cooking this meat low and slow, that, that's about perfect. As that temperature kind of continues to drop down, I'll just add a few more coals to it to try and keep it to that temperature. Um, what we're aiming for here is 87 degrees inside which is about five or six degrees off of um, perfect uh, then we're going to take this uh, meat off and we're going to wrap it so that's how I'm monitoring the temperature um, I've got some alarms set up so that things don't get too hot or too cold um, but then we'll check in and uh, see how this meat starts to cook okay so we're getting on for a couple of hours into this cook now and as you can see we're getting a lovely color from this brisket nice bit of charring around the outside the heat in the barbecue is, is relatively low, it's about 130, 135 degrees centigrade and the probes are telling us that the inside is reaching about 50 degrees. We're starting to see a little bit of a plateau of the temperature now uh, internally and that's perfect. This is cooking up really nice. I'm not going to rotate it, uh, there's not a fierce heat going on in this barbecue so you don't need to keep rotating it or turning it, we're just going to let it go. This is really good, we're about the halfway stage. <coughs> Okay, so we're about four hours into the cook and I've done two things. I've turned the brisket round so that the other side of the brisket, this side here is now closer to the heat just to make sure we get a nice even cook. And I've also added some more coals into the barbecue because I was losing a bit of temperature. So we're going to give it another 30 minutes now and then we're going to wrap this brisket so that we don't lose any moisture. another 30 minutes in the internal temperature on this piece of meat now has reached 60 degrees Fahrenheit now if we continue to cook this uncovered uh, all the way up to the 89 90 degrees that we're aiming for uh, like I said uncovered it's gonna dry out really quickly so what we want to do now is take this off and wrap it and here we go I physically just lifted and shifted this piece of meat onto a nice big sheet of aluminium foil. The only aluminium foil I had was actually quite narrow so what I've done is I've created a joint down the middle here, joined two pieces together and I've stuck another middle piece in here uh, mainly because I'm going to be pouring some liquid into this and I don't want it escaping through the foil. So I'm going to cover this over. Then we're going to take these sides and turn them upwards. Again, the reason. 
mechanism that we turn them upwards because we're going to be putting liquid in here and we don't want it escaping downwards. We've now got a nice opening at the front here. And this is just a very, very basic stock mixture. This is a chicken stock mixture. You can use any stock mixture you like, really. Um, but like I said, it's just to add a little bit of moisture back into this dish. Pour that inside. Fold upwards. Now get this back on. See, we're back on nicely. We still need to keep an eye on the temperature. So, back in with our probe. Find a nice thick piece of the meat. this again now until we get up to that 88 89 degree internal temperature okay so our brisket now has reached the internal temperature according to our probe of 87 degrees I'm gonna make the call and take it off now so nice and simple really barbecue is not running too hot so you should be able to just get your hands in here transfer it onto a tray We'll take this off now the key to this now is getting this inside unwrapping it and letting it rest for at least an hour preferably two but i'll take the camera back inside and we'll have a look at what this looks like in a second okay so we've literally just come off the barbecue we've bought this brisket inside so let's open it up oh yeah looking good and smelling it so good so so good and you can see lots of that juice is still intact there that's what we like we don't want that to dry out it needs to be very very moist I've got my thermometer here meat thermometer little probe let's see what we've got yeah temperature ramping up really quickly in there just going over the 80 degree mark there here yeah, it's still going. So, still a little bit more residual cooking to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this nice and tender. You know, I mean, like there's not, there's not much effort involved in getting that meat probe in there at all. And also bear in mind, this isn't gonna be as tender and as soft as a fillet or a ribeye or anything like that. This is a tough old piece of meat. That's why they make corned beef and that's why they make pastrami out of it. It's about how it's cooked and how it's sliced. There's gonna be a bit of chew into this, but actually I'm really looking forward to giving this a go. So I'm gonna let this uh, cool down now and get towards uh, warm rather than hot. Pop back and I'll show you uh, how it cuts. Okay, so here we are. Now, this piece of beef has rested for nearly two hours and actually it, it's not completely cold it's still relatively warm to touch but what i'm going to do is i'm going to give it uh, a bit of a cut just to see how this has kind of worked out now i normally like to cut uh, this side but that's no good for the camera angle so the first thing i'm going to do is just cut a piece off of the front here cut through that bark Hopefully you can see that. Let me grab my tea towel. Make sure my hands are nice and clean. But that looks pretty decent. As you can see, the beef has got that very pink consistency that you would expect with like a pastrami or a corned beef or a peppered beef. And hopefully you can see that, that is incredibly juicy. What I'm hoping you can see from this is just how beautifully moist this piece of meat is. Let me give it a turn because I'm just mindful of the fact that this is not normally how I cut things. I don't want to cut my hands. 
This is perfect for just slicing off pieces. Now look at that. Let's just try a piece. Mm. Bring you up so you can see. So this beef has come out really well. I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, um, I'll cut another little bit off and I'll just give you a nice, decent close up on the camera as to how this comes out. There you go. Now bear in mind, we haven't smoked this, so we're not expecting to see a big red smoke ring around the outside. What we are expecting to see, because uh, we've cooked it offset and we've put a lot of moisture into this and we've wrapped it, we are expecting to see exactly what we've got there, which is a beautiful moist piece of beef with an absolutely exceptional crust around the outside. What I could have done is probably seared that a little bit longer. You see some of these briskets come off and they're almost black with the bark that's been cooked. A little bit experimental today. Really beautiful. What I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna slice that up nice and thin and make a beautiful baguette with some rocket and some horseradish and all various other bits and pieces. I'll post some photos of that. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your support. Stay safe, stay indoors, and I'll see you again soon.